Denis Villeneuve is one of my favorite directors of all time. The guy just continues to churn out masterpiece after masterpiece after masterpiece. And after seeing Dune Part 2 this week, well, he made another masterpiece. But this guy has an entire huge filmography that I'm excited to dive back into and re-rank from worst to best. But in reality, it's more of best to better. Uh, so it's going to be fun to discuss this today. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below in the comment section as well as hit that like and subscribe button for more movie, TV, and gaming content over here. I love talking all that stuff, and yeah, I'm excited to talk more about Denis because for me, the, his filmography is like everything. Just jumping right into this, just as a heads up, at my number nine and at my number eight is Polytechnica and Insandis. Now, both of these films I know could probably be higher up on your list, but the thing is, is I just have not had the time to rewatch these in a while. So they are at the bottom of my ranking. I think both films are actually really great. But the only two films on this filmography, I would probably just go a four out of five or a nine out of 10. I think they're absolutely important to his filmography. And if you haven't checked them out yet, you absolutely should, because the rest of this ranking is very much films that I go back to and rewatch whenever I get the chance to. Uh, Denis, for me, while I haven't watched those two in a while, is one of those directors that when you watch one of his movies, it's something that you have to cherish and give your time to. And the way I do rankings is I rank them based on what I want to rewatch because at my number seven, this is going to probably piss some people off, is Sicario. Uh, Sicario, for me, is a masterpiece. Like, you're going to hear that like seven and on up. I think all of these films are perfect beyond belief. And Sicario really blew me away because I only went to see it because it was from the director of Made Prisoners, which I loved. And I went and saw Sicario and I was just like dumbfounded by first off all the incredible performances in it, such as Emily Blunt, Josh Brolin, and specifically Benicio Del Toro. And I love the whole concept. I love how close it feels specifically because part of it takes place in Arizona. I live in Arizona. And there's just this gritty, dirty nature to Sicario that always gave me goosebumps shivering down my spine. And Roger Deakins' cinematography, I, I he, he shot so many beautiful and absolutely incredible movies, but Sicario might be one of his best looking movies. Like if you were to take all of his movies, this might be one of his best. And it again, blew me away to the point where every time I think about Sicario, every time I think of moments from it, it goes down my spine. The reason it's lower on this list is I've only seen it a handful of times. It's not one of the ones that I'd clamor to go back to, but I think the movie is perfect. I have no complaints with it, and I absolutely love what Denis did with it. So that brings me down to my number six, which is usually a little higher on my list, but after seeing Dune Part 2, I have kind of come to more of an appreciation on certain films on Denis' filmography. And at my number six, we have Enemy. Enemy for me is a mind trip of a movie that I feel like you either love or you hate. And I'm in the camp that overall thinks this movie is perfect. When I first watched it, I didn't understand what the hell I had watched. And then the shout out Chris Stuckman, he made this incredible deep look into D Denis film Enemy. And it kind of opened my eyes and once a year I like diving back into Enemy or recommending it to someone or even showing someone like sitting down and watching with them and then showing them that video and seeing their like their eyes open up and enemy is kind of like the perfect example of how deep a movie can get without dialogue very much just go off of its visuals the dialogue is important for sure but this is very much an artsy film that overall an overview looks at all of everything is going on specifically with all the spiders. Spiders are very much the number one thing in this movie that can transition so many different things to the point where it's a main crux of it all. If you haven't seen the movie without getting into spoilers, the ending is probably one of my favorite endings of any film ever. It is huge and it just shocks you. Being this, Jake Gyllenhaal is also just incredible in this, but for me, Denis is the director of this. He's the one that crafts and formulates all the formulas you need in this movie to even come to a conclusion on what's going on. But Enemy blows me away every time I watch it. It's definitely a slow burn. It's Denis' slowest film, 
but it's one that I can't get out of my head. And we get up to my number five, which is actually a, usually a lot lower on this list, and that is Blade Runner 2049. Now, as a point of reference, the original Blade Runner I find to be a little bit overrated. I'm not the biggest Ridley Scott fan, and I will say I got excited for this, but it was Denis making this movie. And I remember going to see it opening night and absolutely falling in love with it, instantly saying this is better than the original Blade Runner. And I still contend to this day that Blade Runner 2049 is the superior version, is the better version. I know it's built off that. I know the original Blade Runner is very much just the pillar of it all. But 2049 like takes all the thematics, all the themes, and just hikes it up to 11 in this cyberpunk virtual world. You have incredible performances from the likes of Harrison Ford, Ryan Gosling. I mean, everyone is just acting in part of And even on top of this, Ana de Amis, who I didn't really know anywhere of this, but she shows up in this and she's fucking incredible. All of this is clamored together because of Denis Villeneuve a director that completely and utterly understands sci-fi. And seeing what he's able to do with Doom makes me appreciate Blade Runner more. Because Blade Runner really does have, again, he's able to layer out the thematics and also provide a very entertaining movie that only continues to blow me away every time I think about it. The cinematography, again, incredible for this Roger Deakins. I mean, there's an argument to be made right there as well. The score is stupendous. The visual effects are, I, I mean, non-existent, but I know they're all there. It's just, it looks so real. When it comes down to sci-fi, Denis has it just down. And I know for many people, Blade Runner 2049 will probably be in your top three of his. When we get up to even closer to this, it just really is hard to rank these, but that's where I have to put Blade Runner 2049 personally. Now brings me down to my number four, which is Dune Part 1. I went back and forth on this either being my number three or my number four, but all I can say is that overall, like in my mind, Dune is kind of like all one in the same, specifically Part 1, Part 2, because of how it ends and how Part 2 begins. But for the context of this ranking, Part 1's coming in in fourth place, which is no shame at it and no shade at all because part one i just rewatched and it is fucking incredible from the opening scene to the very last you're locked into this world of dune itself the universe going to kaladan and then arrakis and getting a little bit of a glimpse of the harkins home world and other little things in there it's all these moments built up in the first dune and as I said in my review, the first Dune is very much the base of the pillar of what Dune is and what Denis was setting up. And in a very risky but great move, the first Dune just sets up the world. It sets up these characters and it starts off with that setup and then gives us the event, the murder of the Atreides. And then the second that happens, it transitions into a completely otherly world thing where now you're on your own. You're dealing with the Fremen, learning more about them, learning about what is real, what is not. And Dune becomes a part of a piece of a survival story. And I love how Dune was able to do that. And now after seeing part two, it only elevates part one higher and makes part one stronger. Because if at the time, I know a lot of people were giving, you know, with part one, I'm at like an A minus. Let's see if it actually gets the green light for a sequel. And then let's see how the sequel turns out. For me, I was already an A-plus with it, but now you have that sequel, which is arguably better than the first one. And it raises and rises part one to the pillar that it needed to be. Without part one, we don't have part two. And part one definitively gave all that. Rebecca Ferguson's incredible in this. I love Josh Brolin. I love Jason Momoa. I think that's his best performance in here. And I think Timothy Chalamet is absolutely incredible in this as well. Love Oscar Isaac. Dune Part 1 is just a magical movie, and it's one that we only get so little often. That's why it's incredible that we got Part 2, which we're going to talk about soon. I get into my number 3, which is Prisoners. This one, uh, I flip back and forth on if I wanted Dune to be at number 3 or Prisoners to be at number 3, and I left off on Prisoners because it's, for me, the final film that Denis did on such a home small scale thing which like people could argue like well sicario was kind of like that and like maybe you could argue arrival i i couldn't but 
Prisoners is a movie that just... If you have kids, I don't know how the fuck you watch this movie. But if, if you don't, it's still one that will latch on and rip your heart out. And it's a movie that was shunned at the Oscars. Should have been nominated for Jake Gyllenhaal and Hugh Jackman, who both feature probably some of their best performances. And I still go back and forth on what Hugh Jackman's best performance is, but I do think it's probably leaning more towards Prisoners, even though he's incredible in Logan. And Denis's way of telling a mystery story about a father who loses her daughter and will do anything to find who kidnapped them it is it's terrifying and it's haunting and he goes to the darkest of places but it shows the love of a parent it shows how far they will go to accomplish anything in this manner and i found that prisoner's puzzle box is one that i love to dissect i love to think about i love to revisit i love to jump into and it was my introduction to Denis. And I remember like my grandmother was like, hey, have you heard of this movie or seen it? I just saw it at the theater and I had no idea what she was talking about. And then I went and saw it again, ended up going and seeing it to her after her high recommendation. And it completely blew me away with what Prisoners was able to give. And it's just, again, one of those special movies that, again, comes around every so often. That's why Denis is one of those special directors that when he makes a movie, it's special. But now we get into my number two and I, this one's tough and i it could change it may not i cherish my number two at like such a high degree uh to the fact that i've like i've only seen it like a handful of times and it's one of my favorite films of all time but my number two is arrival i think arrival is one of the best movies ever made uh it's a movie i'm obsessed with it's one that i cherish so much that i legitimately like do not watch because of how much that movie broke me in its twist. I went into the movie expecting a unique alien film with Amy Adams just translating and talking with him, Denis, you know, being the director. And I walked out with my heart absolutely ripped out from the twist and turns it takes in the very final act to what it opens up in terms of what you've been watching in the entire story this entire time. And I just sat there like, what the hell did Denis just do to me? because I, I genuinely mean, I think Arrival is his most heartfelt and emotional film that he's made yet. I think Arrival is one of the most unique alien films yet. I think it's one of the best sci-fi films of all time. And it's at my number two, which is weird because it's one of my favorite films of all time. And we'll, we'll talk about when we get to my number one, but I just, everything about Arrival crafts such a perfect movie. For me, it's probably Amy Adams' last best movie she's done in a while. Her performance, she should have won the Oscar that year. I think Jeremy Renner's great. I think Forrest Whitaker's great. But it's this entire concept of having communication with people we don't know. World, otherly worldly beings that we don't know. But at the same time of watching that, when you can watch an alien movie such as Arrival, and see this unique concept and never really get a look at the aliens just kind of these giant stoic things that talk through these like muddled elements and then it gets to again that twist and Denis is able to craft and layer out one of the most intriguing stories and conversations and very much i feel in my opinion one of the most realistic tellings of how alien like how aliens would probably be here and then decides, pulls the curtain off and goes, I'm gonna fuck your heart up and I'm gonna ruin your day right now. And he did that to me. And Arrival has stuck with me ever since. It's one that I, again, continue to think about. It's one that I continue to sit there and dream about. And it's one that is just a masterpiece. And uh, that's why it's crazy that I'm putting it on my number two, but my number one, it's hard to deny that Dune Part 2 should not be Denis's best film yet. Um, walking out of that movie the first time, I, I loved it. I utterly loved it. I was saying, I genuinely think this is one of the greatest sci-fi sequels, sci-fi films of all time. And then I went and saw it again at the fan film thing that they did in IMAX out here. And I sat there in utter disbelief watching it with a full crowd every seat sold out in imax and thinking to myself this is a once in a lifetime experience genuinely it is and i think certain movies come around and you do have these once in a lifetime experiences with them dune part two is all of that and more 
it is, it, and I'll say this, if you have not seen the movie yet, I'm not going to get into spoilers, this is a non-spoiler review, or ranking. I cannot equivalent enough. Even if you didn't love the first one, like you just liked it, go see the second one. Buy a ticket with a packed theater. If you can, see it in IMAX. This is one of those movies that I want to keep seeing in theaters as much as I possibly can, even with the long runtime, which the runtime like does not feel like two hours and 45 minutes. It flies by. It's one that builds off the pillar of the first film, builds off the world, which is something that I was really surprised to see because they kept saying, this is all action, this is all action. This is not an action movie. There is great action, but it really is building off that pillar, giving us more into the world of the religion of the Fremen, giving us religion of the entire galaxy in a sense, understanding more about the Harkins, understanding more about the Trades, the Fremen itself, like I mentioned, but not just the religion aspect, how they actually move, they maneuver, they work, more about the Sandworms, more about Arrakis, more about, again, our galaxy when it comes down to the Emperor. You're expanding on all that. But then at the same time, you're giving meaty character development to Chani, to Paul Atreides, to Lady Atreides, to uh josh brolin who i think is just great i don't maybe he didn't get the best character development but him he's great uh javier bardem is still gar like has some of the best moments in the entire film and then you had Fre freyed played by austin butler who is absolutely terrifying in this dave batiste is great stellan skarsgård continues to be great christopher Watkins, excellent as the emperor florence Pugh's excellent as the princess and the list goes on and on from there from a performance standpoint it's all 10 out of 10s from character standpoints there's no character that i was missed out on or thought that should have had a little bit more it's a film that legitimately if you were to ask me zach i need you to find at least one issue with dune part two i would tell you right now it's too short it, it could have been 10 to 20 minutes longer and i would not have complained because i don't just want to live in this world of iraq is why well, i don't want to live there but i want to keep venturing in with these characters venturing into this world and learning more about it and the fact that denis feels like he literally transports me to this world to this situation and feels like i'm living in it from the cinematography to the incredible visual effects to the incredible score from hans zimmer to the incredible technical achievement of the sound which makes this whole theater rumble like when they use the thumpers there's a part where like multiple thumpers are being used at once and you just feel it rumbling in the theater, rumbling through each of the aisles like you were at a fucking concert. Dune Part 2 accomplishes all that. It's a once in a lifetime experience watching one of the greatest movies ever made in theaters. And that's why I love Dune Part 2. I loved it so much. I highly would recommend it. It's my favorite Denis Villeneuve film right now. It is one of my favorite films of all time. I think it's one of the best films of all time. I think there's no argument to be made on that. Comment me in the comments. I'm ready to fight over anyone who says this is overrated or anything, but I love Denis as a director. I think he's an incredible director, and I can't wait to hear your guys' thoughts on your ranking. So make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like, subscribe button. Feel free to include any of his other short films that maybe I did also miss, or... Let me know about Polytechnica and Insandis. Do you feel like those should have been moved up? I know the last time I ranked these, a lot of you guys said that I should have moved those up as well. But please let me know down below your guys' thoughts. And of course, until next time, stay classy.